Good morning, my dear students. I am Mrs. Jenny Chazon, your Earth and Life Science teacher. And for now, we are going to study the three types of rocks. So, this picture of mine was captured or taken um, during our field trip in Ilocos. So, this is a limestone formation in Kapurpurawan. This is known as the Kapurpurawan Rock Formation in Ilocos Norte. Then what do you think is the type of this limestone formation? Is it an igneous, sedimentary, or a metamorphic rock? So this photo of mine was taken at University of the Philippines National Institute for Geological Sciences during our science field trip. Okay, so kung mapapansin nyo, katabi ko ang iba't ibang uri ng mga rocks, pwedeng igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. Okay, let's talk about igneous rocks. So what are igneous rocks? They are formed from magma or lava that cools and hardens. So nanggaling po ang mga batong ito, sa mga pinatigas na magma or lava. At alam naman natin na ang magma or lava ay nanggaling sa isang volcano. It came from Latin word ignis, which means fire. And these are the most abundant rocks that we have in the crust. Pinakamaraming type of rocks ay ang igneous. So they are generally hard and tough and classified according to their origin, texture, and mineral composition. The first classification that we have is the origin of a rock. So, sinasabi dito kung saan nanggaling or nabuo ang igneous rock. So, there are two types, the extrusive rock and intrusive rock. So, ano ang meron sa extrusive rock? These rocks are formed on the surface of the volcano. So, sila ay tumigas doon sa surface or sa labas ng volcano. Meanwhile, in the intrusive rock, it is formed underground or what we call as plutons. So, sila ay tumigas doon sa underground, no, sa ilalim ng volcano. Kaya tinawag silang plutons. Doon sila tumigas. So, this is extrusive and intrusive origin of rock. Again, extrusive rocks are igneous rocks formed from lava. So, hindi natin sinam sinabi na magma kasi ang magma ay nasa loob pa or ilalim ng volcano. So, kapag siya ay lumabas na, ito ay tinatawag na lava. Okay? So, ang mga igneous extrusive rocks ay nabuo or pinatigas na lava. So, one of the example is basalt. It forms most of the crust which includes the crust on the ocean floor. Usually dark colored hard and fine green. We also have another example of extrusive rock in the form of obsidian. So, ano ang napapansin nyo sa isang obsidian rock? Tama. So, it looks like a glassy material. So, kung mapapansin nyo, it is dark colored, katulad ng um, basalt and it's glassy. No, titignan mo pa lang parang nababasag, no? And it has no crystal. It is used for weapons and tools by shaping them into pointed and sharp-edged objects. Okay, so siguro yung mga ninuno natin, ito yung ginagamit na weapon uh, or mga pointed object, no, para pang protection ng kanilang sarili lalo na sa mga uh, animals no and uh, kung mapapansin niyo mukha namang madali siyang i-deform or 
um, ihugis no sa mga pointed object. Okay, and that is an obsidian. This one is another extrusive rock which is a pumice. So ano napapansin niyo sa surface ng pumice? Okay, very good. So butas-butas. Um lighter colored than uh, obsidian and basalt. Okay. So, kung mapapansin nyo, marami siyang butas. There are, there is a presence of many air holes. So, saan ba nang galing itong mga butas na to? This is due to the gas bubbles that are trapped in the rock during the cooling process. So, habang siya ay tumitigas or dumadaan sa solidification or cooling process, no, merong mga natrap na gas bubbles sa loob ng rock. Kaya naman, nung siya ay lumabas na or nasa nag-develop na talaga into a rock, may kita nyo na may mga butas-butas. The cooling process or rock that is light colored, it is used for grinding, scrubbing, and polishing. So, kung mapapansin nyo, Merong purpose pala yung pagkakaroon niya ng mga uh, sacks or air holes. So, it is used for scrubbing. Siyempre nga naman, tama yan. Mukhang may iwan yung mga libag dyan sa mga butas-butas na yan. So, it is also used for grinding and polishing. Okay, another um, extrusive rock is scoria. So, what do you notice or observe on the surface of scoria? Yes, correct. So, it also has many holes like the pumice. Pero anong difference ang nakikita nyo between scoria and the pumice holes? Correct, mas malaki ang mga holes kesa dun sa naunang bato, the pumice. So, the scoria has larger holes and at the same time, denser and darker. So, um, same explanation din, katulad ng pumice, na merong natatrap na air bubbles or gas bubbles bago sila mag-solidify, you know, dumaan sa solidification process, itong mga magma na to. Okay, so... Um, ang nangyayari, dahil malaki yung mga butas, kumbaga, talagang nakalabas na agad, no? Yung mga air uh, or mga gases bago pa dumating yung pag um, solidify nila. Unlike sa pumis, parang mas naunang mag-solidify muna ng kaunti, no? Tsaka ngayon, uh, nag, nag si escapean or nagsilabasan yung mga bubbles kaya maliliit lang yung mga holes okay so scoria is a highly vesicular dark colored volcanic rock that may or may not contain crystals and sinasabi nila usually itong mga scoria ay nabuo sa isang cinder cone type of volcano that usually erupts so before we move on to the next type of igneous rock, let us match first you know, the pictures of the rock into its proper name. Okay. So, number one, pumice. Number two, obsidian. And number three, scoria. Okay, so let us now answer. For number one, the pumice is letter B. For number two, obsidian is letter C. And for scoria, it is letter A. So, who got it correctly? So, let us move on to the other type no, of igneous rock based on its origin. Okay, so the other one is intrusive rocks. So, gaya ng sinabi ko, these rocks are formed 
when magma hardened or solidif solidified beneath the earth's surface. So, nandun siya sa ilalim. No? Doon siya tumigas itong magma na to. So, dahil nasa ilalim siya, definitely, yung cooling process mas matagal kesa dun sa extrusive rock. Kasi ang extrusive rock, <clears throat> kapag lumabas yan sa volcano, at yan ay mahahanginan no, from the air coming from the outside environment sa atmosphere, mas mabilis yung cooling process. Ito kasi nasa ilalim. No? Eh alam naman natin sa ilalim, mainit din. So kaya sinasabi nila, it will take thousands or millions of years to solidify. Ganun katagal ang intrusive igneous rocks. So let us have this example of an intrusive igneous rock, the granite. Okay, so are you familiar with granite? Okay, tama. So most of the rocks no, in the continental crust is composed of the granite. So ano bang karakteristik ng granite? It is light colored. Obviously, nakikita nyo naman sa picture, coarse green rock. So what do we mean by that? What is coarse green rock? So, mapapansin nyo na halata or very obvious yung mga greens. Malalaki. So, malalaki kasi yung mga greens niya or what we call as crystals ng rock. So, it is visible to the naked eye. Kaya tinawag siyang coarse green rock. Kasi kapag hindi siya visible or maliliit, no? yung mga crystals or grains ng isang bato, ang tawag sa kanya ay fine-grained rock. So, dito sa granite, very obvious or kitang-kita natin yung mga components niya na katulad ng mga grains. So, the most abundant intrusive rock is granite. Okay? So, granite forms the core of many mountain ranges. Kumbaga, mas mabilis siyang makuha dito sa mga bases ng mga mountain ranges. Okay, next, intrusive igneous rock is gabbro. So, uh, what do you notice about the surface of gabbro? Okay, correct. It is dark colored and also has um, coarse grain. Okay, so... Uh, what makes the gabbro a dark colored igneous rock? Ano sa tingin nyo? Bakit kaya mai or dark yung kulay nito compared dun sa mga naunang um, types of rock? Okay, so um, this uh, this is a kind of a mafic rock. Pag sabi kasi nating mafic rock, ito yung mga dark colored rock. So, Ah, uh, ito ay nakadepende sa content ng silica. No? So kapag kaunti ang content ng silica, it will tend to be mafic, nagiging dark yung kulay. Kapag naman marami ang silica content ng isang bato, it will tend to be a felsic rock, no? Which is nagiging light yung kulay niya. And what makes it darker pa is due also to the higher content of iron and magnesium. Aside from having a less silica content. No? Yan yung maganda naman sa gabbro. And it is called the black granite. So let's now move on to the other classification of igneous rock. And this one is based on the texture. So what do we mean by the texture? It, it depends on the size and shape of its mineral crystals. The texture may be fine grain, coarse grain, glassy, or porphyritic. So meron tayong four types ng texture ng isang bato. So... How can we say that a rock is fine grain, coarse grain, porphyritic, or glassy? So let us now move on to the next slide. 
So this one is a phonetic or fine grain. How can we say that a rock is a phonetic just like in the example? What do you observe on the examples of two rocks, the rhyolite and basalt? Okay, correct. So they have a fine grain. Ang ibig sabihin nito, yung kanilang mga crystals or grains ay masyadong maliit. Sa sobrang liit, um, nahihirapan natin makita ito. Cannot be seen with our naked eye dahil nga maliliit ang kanilang mga grains or crystals. So, paano nangyayari ito? Bakit nagkakaroon ng mga very small crystals or grains ang isang bato? So, it is due to the rapid cooling of lava. Kapag siya ay tumigas, nagkakaroon siya ng mabilis na pagtigas or cooling, tinatawag natin. So, parang ang bilis-bilis niyang lumabas sa surface and therefore, doon sa volcanic surface, um, nakaka-absorb uh, nakaka na siya ng mga hangin dun na ang, yun ang dahilan kung bakit sobrang bilis ng kanyang cooling process. No? Parang wala nang time mag-form mag pa itong mga crystals na to. Wala nang time pa para lumaki sila kasi nga pagkalabas pa lang sa surface ng volcano, um, na-absorb niya na yung mga uh, malalamig na environment o sabihin natin yung uh, appropriate temperature para siya ay mag-solidify or mag-harden. Another texture is the phaneritic or coarse green. So, dito naman, mapapansin natin na malalaki ang kanilang mga greens or crystals Obviously, nakikita natin, uh, madaling makita sa isang bato ang mga grains na ito. So, one of the example is granite and gabbro. Okay, so paano nangyayari na nagkakaroon sila ng mga malalaking grains compared dun sa nauna na aphanitic texture? So, dito kadalasan, slow cooling po yung process. Mabagal yung process ng solidification o yung pagtigas ng magma. So, ang nangyayari, lumalaki yung crystals. Dahil nga mabagal, hindi sila, um, kumbaga, marami yung time para sila ay uh, uh, mag-develop pa, lumaki pa, ng husto dahil matagal ang solidification process nila. So, that's what you call Phaneritic. And alam naman natin na ang merong mga slow cooling ay nangyayari underground. No? Kasi aside from the mataas ang temperature, mataas ang temperature, medyo mainit. No? So mabagal ang kanyang cooling. Okay, so I have here a photo of a granite rock. So as you can see, it is composed of the of three minerals, three different minerals such as the feldspar, uh, which has a color brown, I think, hornblende, which has a dark colored mineral, and quartz, light colored, or sabihin natin pwedeng transparent. Okay, so it is composed of feldspar, hornblende, and quartz. So may kita natin na itong granite na to, obviously, ay Kitang-kita mo yung greens, na ba? Nakikita natin nga yung differences in color. So, may kita natin na visible no, ang kanyang green. That is why it is a coarse green rock. Okay, ano ba? Paano ba nabuo ang coarse green rock? Dahil po sa slow cooling process, kaya marami yung chance or there is a bigger chances for the grains to get bigger or to develop uh, into large uh, grains. So, in porphyritic texture, um, mapapansin nyo na parang merong dalawang 
magkaibang sizes no ng mga grains. So kung mapapansin niyo may mga malalaking grains, tapos meron din namang sobrang maliliit na grains or crystals. So pinaghalong aphanitic and phaneritic texture ang porphyritic. So these rocks are formed when intrusive rocks cool into two stages. Dalawang stages ang pinagdaanan yan. As the magma begins to cool, large crystals form slowly. So, nauna munang ma-develop ang mga large crystals. And then, after nila ma-develop, meron pa rin remaining magma, which now cools more quickly. So, ito, mas mabibilis yung remaining magma no, na natira after the development of the large crystals or the solidification of large crystals. Ngayon naman, yung natirang magma, mabilis ang kanyang cooling or hardening process. That's why it formed small crystals. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, merong large crystals or grains na tinatawag nating phenocrysts. And, siya ay embedded on a aphanitic matrix or ground mass. So, this is a rock with large crystals scattered or embedded on a background of much smaller crystals. So, this is called porphyritic texture. Aside from the origin and texture, uh, rocks can also be classified into mineral composition. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, the color of the rock, can be dark and light colored. So, paano natin masasabi na ang isang bato ay dark colored at ang isang bato ay light colored? So, it is dark when there is a presence of low silica content. No? Katulad ng basalt. And it can become light colored when there is a presence of high silica content na meron sa bato, such as the granite. Okay, so, uh, the color depends on the component silica. No, kung marami siya, or kung mataas siya, nagiging felsic. Kapag mababa naman siya, ang tawag naman doon sa dark colored rock ay mafic. Okay, so tandaan, dark colored rocks are mafic, while the light colored rocks are felsic. So, in this um, image po, may kita natin yung four examples of rocks. The granite, rhyolite, gabbro, and basalt. So, the granite can be classified into felsic and coarse grain. The rhyolite can be classified into felsic but fine grain. On the other hand, the gabbro is mafic or dry colored and it is coarse grain also. And the basalt that is also mafic is fine grain. So, uh, the texture and the mineral classification is different among these examples of rocks. <clears throat> so, another texture is pegmatitic. So, a pe uh, what is a pegmatite? It is an igneous rock formed underground with interlocking crystals usually larger than 2.5 cm in size. So, ito naman, pegmatitic. Uh, meron siyang mga crystals or grains na pagkalaki-laki, no? uh, more than 2.5 cm. So, pag nakakita tayo ng very large crystals embedded no? or scattered, so ang tawag doon ay pegmatitic. For this activity, you are going to analyze the pictures of six samples of rocks and describe the rock's color if it is a mafic or felsic and the texture if it is phaneritic, aphanitic, glassy, porphyritic, or pegmatitic.